I think the critical changes that the Ukraine war have made in NATO is that on the positive side, it has shown we've revived the alliance after focusing for four years on burden sharing, that we can support a country in trouble, and that our allies are willing to stand up and act. At the same time, it has shown that in a virtually every case, including the United States, we've let our forces in NATO decline, the readiness, the capability, the modernization and the interoperability all pose very, very serious challenges and ones that will take time to correct. There's no quick solution to this. You need to modernize virtually every element of the forces, make them more capable in the forward area, and make them faster in building up and deploying forward. It takes time to create new weapons, to modernize forces, and improve readiness. One thing we can predict out of this very uncertain situation, as long as Putin is at the head of Russia, we are not dealing with competition or cooperation, we are dealing with confrontation. And that will go on as long as he or anyone like him controls Russia. The second thing we can be assured of is our competition with China will continue. It may not be quite as overt and direct, but China is a far more powerful country in terms of its economy and its growing military forces today than Russia. And this means we face competition from two superpowers, not one. This is not a Cold War. It is a confrontation involving very different states and capabilities. We need to realize that when you have countries like China and Russia, we are not talking about competing simply with the countries. China and Russia will exploit the economic situation, intervene wherever they can from places like Venezuela to Syria to places in Asia. We're talking about a global presence and a need to revitalize our strategic partnerships, not only in NATO, but in Asia and the rest of the world. For more information, please visit CSIS.org.